I would like to say a few more words about the different running times that we have seen so far. The worst case running time, the average case running time, and the best case running time. So consider this plot of running time versus input size. Running time as a function of input size. So on the x-axis we have the input size which varies, it starts from 1. Input sizes are of course integers. So we start from uh, the smallest input which is a size 1 and we go all the way up to infinity. And what I have shown here are values of running times for four different inputs, for four different input sizes. We have an input size n, we have an input size n minus 1, n plus 1, n plus 2. Now notice that for a given input size, let's say you take an input size n, you don't see a single value for the running time. So each of these red dots over here represents one particular input of size n. And it represents the running time for that particular input of size n. Now there are many inputs of size n. Right? So for example, if, if you take n is equal to 8, you can have let's say we are again looking at uh, we are looking specifically at the sorting problem one of the inputs of size 8 could just be a sorted array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 eight. there are 8 elements in the array which are basically numbers from 1 to 8 and they are all in sorted order. So this represents one particular input of size 8. Another input of size 8 could be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is the um, this is the same input but reverse sorted. Okay, so the input size here is also 8. Uh, the input size here is also 8. Another possible input of the same size could be 7, 8, 4, 5, 1, 3, 2, 6. Now what we saw in, in the case of insertion sort was that if the, if the array is already sorted, that is going to minimize the value of the running time for that particular input size, which is in this case 8. So among these different inputs of size 8, the smallest value of the running time corresponds to the case where the array is already sorted. For insertion sort, of course. Likewise, the reverse sorted array, the reverse sorted array of size n, is going to cause the running time to be highest for that particular input value, for that particular input size, which is n. And so you have a range of different running times for inputs of size n because there are different types of inputs of size n. And the worst case running time, so the worst case t of n, is really a function which connects together the running times for worst case inputs of all possible sizes. So if I take the worst case input of size n minus 1, which leads to this particular running time, 
writing the worst case input for of size n, writing the worst case input of size n plus one, which 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 leads to this running time. So these are the running time for those worst case inputs. Now a function which connects the topmost points for each input size is a function which corresponds to the worst case running time t of t. So this is the worst case running time of the insertion sort or any other algorithm where for the same input sizes you have a range of running times. Likewise if I connect together the lowest points for each input size the lowest values of running times for each input size, I'm going to get a curve or a function which corresponds to the best case running time. And if I take the average running time over all inputs of size n, Let's say the average falls somewhere over here. Of course, taking into account the probability distribution. In this case, let's say that each input is equally likely. So effectively, we'll be taking the average of all the points. We can do that for every input size. And if we connect together these average values, for the running times for every input size, we get a curve corresponding to the average case running time. This is just a way to intuitively visualize what these three running times are. What is the worst case running time? What is the average case running time? And what is the best case running time? We have already seen their definitions. The best case running time is the minimum running time over all inputs of size n. And that minimum is shown in this uh, in this plot here by, by this point at the very bottom of this range of running times for the input of size n. So if you take these bottommost points for all the input sizes and simply connect them together by a curve, you're going to get a function corresponding to the best case running time. Likewise, if I take the topmost or the highest points in the range for the running times for the various input sizes, I'm going to get the worst case running time. And if I connect together, if I determine what the average running time is for each input size, if I connect together the values of the average as a function of the input size, I'm going to get the average case running time. Now the, uh, this, this, these plots that I've shown here roughly correspond to how the running times for insertion sort will look. But if you remember, in the selection sort algorithm, we saw that regardless of what the type of input is, the expression for the running time is going to be the same. Okay, so uh, in particular, I'm not, I'm talking particularly about the, uh, the proper code for selection sort. I'm not talking about the case where we specially optimize the algorithm to handle the special case where the input array is already sorted. So let's ignore that for a moment. Let's ignore that special case for a moment. Let's just recall what the, the actual code, the proper code for selection sort was, which did not depend on the type of input. What that means is for a given input size, say n, if we were to look at selection sort, we would not see a range of running times like this. In fact, there would be a single point representing the running time 
for an input of size n. Because even if we take a sorted array of size n or a reverse sorted array or a partially sorted array or a random array of size n, it doesn't matter, the running time is going to be the same. So in that case, we would have got single points. These curves, then these curves for the for the worst case, average case, and best case running times would have coincided. And instead of this range, you would have had single points representing single values of running time for any input size. And so it would have been a single curve corresponding to the worst case running time, the average case running time, and the best case running time. Now the handle the special case where we check whether the array is already sorted or not. And if it's sorted, we exit. Let's say we looked at that optimized version, that optimized implementation of the selection sort algorithm. Then we would have seen two points here. Right? For the special case where the array is already sorted, our running time would have been smaller. It would have been, um, actually it would have been theta of n, so it would have looked something like this. And it would have looked like a straight line where the best case running time is theta of n, so it's proportional to n. So it would have looked like a straight line. But the worst case running time then would have looked as before like this. And of course, the average case would have been more complicated because uh, if there are many inputs of size n and only a few of them representing sorted uh, sorted arrays, that is, if most of the inputs were not completely sorted, then most of the, the contribution of these points would have been significantly more, much more to the average than the contribution of these points. And so the average case T of n would have been very close to the worst case uh, curve. So this is how it would have looked for the optimized version of selection sort. But in general, we would have a range of running times for different inputs of size n as shown in this particular plot. 